Welcome to Real Physics. This is a series of key experiments in the history of physics and today I am talking about the einstein de Haas experiment. Now, we are at the beginning of the 20th century and physicists were enthusiastic about the picture of the atom being a little solar system with electrons orbiting the nucleus as planets do uh, for the Sun. So this was the idea and of course people are interested to find experimental verifications and Einstein thought about a very straightforward methods to prove that idea and of course it was well known that charges moving charges create a magnetic field if you move a charge in this direction according to the right hand rule there would be a circular magnetic field and if you have an orbiting charge of course there would be a magnetic field in vertical direction you can measure. So you take just a metallic rod, you know what the magnetization is, you can measure it, then you demagnetize it and you put it again in a magnetic field. So what you can do is turn on the magnetic field and of course there will be the magnetization which is turned on but not only, also the motion of the electrons is now not random but directed in one direction preferably. So what you observe here is a very tiny rotation of that metallic rod and you can use a torsion balance. Already Cavendish did it for the measurement of the gravitational constant. So the torsion balance was a well-established experimental tool and with this very tiny fiber you could measure the angular momentum. Now what's the news here? Uh, there is a certain relation of the angular momentum and the magnetization of the electron. You could calculate and Einstein just wanted to verify that that's true. And so he calculated the expected value and compared it to the experimental result. And the relation was he published 1. 102 or something experimental error. There was a little deviation in one measurement. 1.45 but they dismissed it as an experimental error. Now this was at first sight a straightforward verification of that still fantastic idea of little solar systems but the interesting thing is that the measurement was wrong. When later people tried to repeat the experiment it turned out the, that the relation of the magnetization to the angular momentum was not 1 but 2. That means that the electron produced twice as much magnetization, twice as much magnetic field as you would expect from a circular motion. And that's very, very strange. Now what you can do is try to explain saying, oh, there's not only an orbital motion of the electron around the nucleus, but there is also a proper rotation. But even that does not explain the thing. As Lawrence pointed out, you would need superluminal velocities in this proper rotation. And whatever you do, I mean, whatever distribution of charge you put in a circular motion, it's always the calculated relation of the angular momentum and the magnetization. But it's twice as much in reality. And that points to a very deep riddle, points to something we really do not understand to this day because there must be something deeply wrong in our understanding of the microscopic world. Now people used to explain it, oh this is a quantum effect and this, that proves somehow quantum mechanics is right. No, the quantum at this point is just something you do not understand. It's kind of an excuse, a name that you have invented for the lack of understanding of nature. And well, to add one psychologically interesting thing is that Einstein and de Haas, I mean Einstein in the first place, was a passionate, honest scientist and he already had done his career, so to speak, which is not the case automatically with all modern experiments. And still he, he fell victim to that illusion of wanting to confirm your expectations, that famous confirmation bias. And for that reason he dismissed the Closer to the correctness result 1.45 in favor of 102 
and the correct results for us to think about that. Well, Einstein de Haas, we're talking about 1915, was the beginning of this period in which people are, were investigating spin. And as I said, spin is still one of the great unsolved riddles of physics. And this was a key experiment. Don't forget to like the video. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.